Hi, Mickey. Hi, Michael. Hey. Hello. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah. Fancy meeting you here. It's been a while. Yeah. Hi, hello. So I think I think I'll I'll keep my video off, um, just because I still don't have high speed internet, and I'm tethering. So just to make sure I don't come off as choppy. Should we give folks a few minutes or get started? What do you think, Willie? I usually wait till 11.05 um, shortly after that. And then possibly people start trickling in. You know, it's interesting. I'm not. I'm not used to 37 degree weather in, in the Bay. I've been ha I mean, I've been wearing sweaters and everything, and blasting my heat. Uh, it seems to be like that all over the all over the country. Yeah, we're gonna get like two inches supposedly overnight. It's pretty cold here, but it fluctuates so much. It was in the 60s yesterday. It's very strange. It's a balmy 85 in Florida. Oh, so you're probably on the, you're probably not going to get hit with cold weather, but um, no. Yeah, there was, we're, we're, we're going to get the other weather. We're going to get, the, we're going to get the weather, we're going to get the warmth that was stolen from everybody else. Oh, man. Okay. So, <laughs> so greedy. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, we, we like it real hot here, I guess. Not bad. And uh, Michael, so did you, were you gonna, how did you wanna do this? Just like, did you have the slides that you wanted to share or? Um... Uh, I, was, I was just going to um, welcome folks, do introductions and then hand off to you. I don't have slides. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'll, uh, so after the intro, I can I could share my screen. Okay, that works. So maybe, Maybe another minute and then you could you could keep it off. Okay, uh, well, welcome everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks for joining us at the February meeting of the Marquez community. And um, I'm Michael Robinson, developer relations engineer with Datakin. I'll be facilitating the meetings. And um, why don't we start with introductions? Uh, Minkyu, you're top left on my screen. If you don't mind, could you start us off? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> so I'm Minkyu and uh, a software developer at Datakin. 
and I've been in Macaulay's committee meeting quite a while. Do now. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Michael Collado. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm a staff engineer at Datakin. Um, I've been working in, in the Marquez code base for almost exactly a year now. Uh, that's it. Oh, Willie? Sure, yeah. Um, hi, I'm Willie. I'm a software engineer at Datakin. I've been uh, working on Marquez for a while, so I'm the co creator of Marquez, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit about me. And Ross? Hi, I'm a VP marketing at Datakin, and I'm here to help with words and pictures and stories and anything else the community needs. Uh, thank you, everybody. I'll turn it over to Willie. Great, thanks, Michael. Cool. Okay, so uh, for this month uh, of February, the community meeting, we we have a few things. Um, one, one I want to announce uh, is for the release date of Marquez 2.1. Uh, I know we've been, we talked about it in the last community meeting about what's in store for 2.1. So you can always check out the change logs uh, if you want to know what's coming. But just know that the release date has been moved to January 28th. And since we're, you know, the theme of this meeting will a lot be about open lineage and really transitioning to open lineage and using a lot of the integrations, but we'll talk a little about the open lineage Java coin. Uh, so I wanted to at least kind of point out that we are due for a release on Monday and it aligns with the open lineage 06 release that's also going to be on, on the 28th. Um, the, the one thing I did wanted to point out is that right now there's probably some confusion in the community around what Java client to use. So right now Marquez has a Java client uh, and a lot of a lot of the methods for kind of collecting metadata has have been deprecated. So uh, you know like creating a job, creating a data set, those have been deprecated. So there's been a lot of questions on well how do I going forward begin to collect metadata? Uh, the one thing that we've been working on on the open lineage side, uh, so if you've got PR uh, 480, uh, there's a Java client that introduces uh, some abstractions around transport, um, which is something I'll, I'll walk, I'm going to demo a little bit. Uh, so that way people know how to start collecting metadata uh, using open lineage and setting it to the Marquez backend. Uh, so this PR is in review. And it's something that I'm working on. And um, actually, Mike, who's on the call, has been giving reviews on and um, really, really good feedback. So we're, we're hoping that we could squeeze this in in the, in the next open lineage release because uh, there's not too much work there. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. And if you're interested and want to follow the development, definitely check out the PR. Okay, uh, okay sorry, here, I skipped this part. So for the agenda, there was only two things I really wanted to point out. Um, I, when I wanted to walk everyone through the open lineage integrations, uh, just to kind of reiterate that there are integrations out there that uh, make things very easy to start uh, collecting metadata and sending it over to Marquez. Uh, the, the integration available on the Open Lineage site, and this is something that uh, Ross, you've been even kind of leading and, and pushing for. So I just want to give a shout out that the, dot, the website looks great and it's constantly being improved. Uh, if you look on the top right, there'll be integrations and the one, the one that have been in development, uh, it's going to be Apache Airflow and Spark and DBT. Uh, so we do have docs available. Uh, so with Open Lineage, you can kind of take a look at what it's required to get up and running, uh, how to use the integration, how to set it up and configure it uh, to point to Open Lineage backend. So, the last community meeting, we talked about the removal of the Marquez Airflow library and also the Spark um, Marquez Air, uh, library. So those have been removed. So really, we want to push people towards moving uh, to using the open lineage libraries that are available. 
there. So really quick, um, in terms of installation, just re your requirements.txt file just needs to uh, install the open language airflow or however you deploy and however you configure your airflow environment, just make sure that you need to, you just make sure you have that library installed. And when you do, um, you need to set the open language URL to point to your Marquez deployment here. It's just pointing to a local instance uh, of Marquez running. So uh, yeah, that's all that's required there. Uh, here, the usage you could, we talked about different ways on how to configure market uh, open language to pull metadata from your DAG. Right now we're, we're working, um, or the open language team is working on uh, kind of moving away from updating your imports in your DAG and just using a task listener, which I think is in progress. And there's a, there's a PR that begins to um, leverage the work that's been done between the open lineage team and also air, the airflow side. Uh, so they expose this new task listener that can listen for uh, tasks when they when the state changes. And we, they, now we can pull metadata in real time. Um, it's a little bit cleaner. So the back end, and it's not mentioned here, but there's a lineage back end that open lineage supports that, that's no longer, I mean, it's discouraged to be used and uh, just because we're moving forward to just using the uh, the task listener, uh, which is not outlined here. But if I go, uh, let me see. Let's see the integrations and flow. Yeah, I think there's this configuration component here. If I'm not mistaken. Maybe not. My bad. I, th I thought it was pointed out here, but I think it maybe it was a PR that I was looking at. Uh, it, it, I thought it was up there, it was there, but it, you passed it. I think you just scroll past a little bit quickly. Oh, did I? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, good call. Right. Okay, so here's the experimental open back backend. So, um, again, Smart Tech is experimental. You could definitely try using it, but the only thing is it doesn't capture failed events. Um, I think there was just some complexity there and to get that to trigger when a failed run happens. And I think that's what started a discussion around the task listener. Uh, so just wanted to point that out. But for now, I, I think it's totally okay to be using the open the Airflow DAG and just know that there might be easier ways to implement that or configure Marquez going forward using a plugin. And uh, I think that uh, I won't spend too much time on this, but Here we go. And I, I was wondering, let me see if it's documented. Cool, yeah, so it's uh, this open lineage plugin. And uh, nope, I won't go too far there. Uh, but just know that's in progress and it's currently blocked uh, by the airflow, I think it's 2.3, yeah, 2.3, uh, which I think the airflow release is scheduled for, for sometime next month, so sometime in March. Um, so it's a bit of a blocker. So that's why if you want to get up and running, I kind of recommend just using um, the import if you wanted to kind of to capture all the metadata, but if you wanted to just test things out, you can still use the open lineage back and just know that there are some limitations there. Um, yeah, so the, the other one is the, the Spark one. I think, let me see the docs, this one. I'm wondering how updated it is. Okay, this is still using the agent. Uh, actually, Mike, do, do you know if this has been updated? Because uh, it's still, I think it's still using the, the Spark agent details, but maybe that doesn't necessarily matter. Um, just know that uh, when you do your Spark submit, there's configuration that you have to provide. And right now there, yeah, this one. Yeah, Let's so that configuration you're looking change. at there so is, to... yeah, that, that is using the listener, not the agent. Mm -hmm. That that configuration you're looking at right there. Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay, great. I, I was looking at the path here. I was like, okay, dot agent. Um, but you just have to specify the, the extra listener to configure with Spark. And there's just been a lot of work that, Mike, you've been doing on improving that overall and really good development that's been happening there. 
Uh, so a lot of it, essentially there, just parsing the, the Spark logical plan and introducing all these different visitors that depending on the source, uh, we're able to extract a lot of information on the inputs and outputs and capture the state, the different state changes of the Spark job. And as long as you point the, the host, so spark.openlineage.host uh, to your Marquez instance or just your deployment, and then provide a namespace, uh, it will just start working and capture a bunch of information uh, as well. So yeah, here's some details on how to do the Spark defaults conf and things that you can provide there. And okay, here's the Java agent, I see. Cool. But yeah, just I just wanted to point this out and kind of guide the Marquez community to start using uh, these listener, uh, I'm sorry, these new integrations, because uh, it's going to be pretty important going forward. Um, just because you know, as you start using these integrations, you can start giving us feedback or give the open language community some feedback on its usage and maybe find bugs and, and things like that. Uh, the cool thing also is that there is a new integration that uh, will be released in 0 06 of open language. So if you there's Daxter support. So I think if for those, um, let's see Daxter.io, I think that's the, uh, so just another data orchestration uh, similar to Airflow. But I think for them, it's uh, the inputs and outputs are typed um, and it's been seeing a lot of usage lately. So that was contributed, I think, by the Daxter team. So what, what I'm kind of trying to say here is, uh, let me go back to, this uh, so as as the open language community grows, integrations themselves will be added and will be focused on. So one thing that um, open language is working on is uh, an integration with Flink and Kafka. So there's there's a lot of things that you could take advantage of, or a lot of different connections that you can use in your in your platform at your organization um, with with uh, switching over to just using open language and the integrations that are offered. Cool. So any, did anyone want to add anything to that? Uh, I just wanted to point that out. OK. Um, then, the, then the other one, I, this, this one I could have done curl, or I, you know, there, there is a demo that Datakin has that I wanted to show. or. Uh, so we've been we've been working on demoing more and more of of open lineage. So with this here, this is just a simple example, and that was part of a workshop that we put together. And I, I wanted to kind of put things in more concrete terms and walk walk uh, walk people through if you were going to use the open, the open lineage Java client, what that would look like. Um, so. That's kind of what I wanted to go through. And I'll, I'll do it fairly quickly, uh, just because I know some on the call have seen this before. Um, but what I wanted to show was that, you know, there's this simple example that we have, and um, it, it has workflows. So there's, a, there's an interface for workflow. And um, so a lot of the time, maybe there's an integration that doesn't exist currently or doesn't fit uh in your organization so you might you might have written your own workflow a scheduler and now you have to integrate open lineage and this kind of just goes into what's involved in that so i did a hypothetical example on a workflow and it has an interface uh, for um, other workflows to implement and it just requires that uh, you define a run method so what I end up having is this really simple, so I'll go here. <clears throat> I have this really simple workflow that I call simple workflow that implements um, workflow. I have, I created this database, uh, which is part of the storage. So um, here you kind of, it abstracts away connecting to the database, which a lot of organizations might have internally, just so that way their, new, their users don't have to worry about the low level details on executing SQL or connecting to the data, database. So we have this factory method called new database. And right now we only support executing SQL. So if you give us a SQL statement, um, we'll go ahead and uh, return back the rows that are relevant to that SQL statement, if any. 
right? So I won't go into detail here, but just kind of parses things out and returns back, returns back to set of rows. Uh, so this simple workflow, it needs an instance of database. Uh, here, I'm just connecting to um, a database called Math because I'm doing some calculus and the users. So we, the, the one thing that we do have are two jobs. Uh, one's called counter and one's called sum. Uh, so we just have a job that does some incrementing and another one that just does some sums. So that is less relevant. I think what's more interesting is really what happens in the job itself. So we have a job. Um, this is a, it's a class that you have a name and it can execute some SQL. And it has, a, it can templatize a few things. So it has your in tables and your out tables. So let's say we only focus on the workload and we want to track this job that said, give me the inputs and give me the outputs and I'll go ahead and generate the SQL. So that's common as well. Just some abstraction, an abstraction layer for your jobs. And here we kind of go and see whether or not the, the SQL has inputs or output tables. And then we, we build a SQL and eventually using the database instance, we run the SQL itself. Now there's a bunch of other stuff in here. Maybe not. One thing I wanted to show was, well, what if you want to add open lineage? Uh, how, how do you start capturing metadata all around jobs? Or how do you start capturing the data for these jobs? Uh, in order to do that, I'm gonna bring up Marquez. I'll bring up the API, the UI. Uh, okay, nice. And I'll do what post. Okay. Okay, so we, we have uh, sort of a fresh deployment of Marquez, so we have no jobs and no data sets of the namespace. And well, I have this driver class uh, because I just felt lazy and I just put it in a test. And I'm just creating the simple workflow and I'm running it. And so if I run it now, it should work. If it passes, that means it works and I feel good. Okay, so that worked. But you'll see that there's no calls to Marquez. It's, it's still a way for calls to be made. And what uh, I'll show you first enabling. So if we go back to our workflows and for this package, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll comment this. So now we have workflows, I call it manage the package and then there's job. So what that's going to do is start, it's going to override the job classes. So what you want when you're when you're developing in normally these libraries, you don't want your users to change the classes or I mean in this case the, the path is going to change, but you don't want the actual code itself to change. You still want functionality to remain the same. So you still want when someone says you know dot sql and execute, you still want things to function what they did without extra parameters. So it'll be a little bit more seamless for your users. And now if I run this test, okay, so I'm gonna run this test again. And okay, so, all right, so now what you're gonna see is you have about, yeah, four new calls. So they're all going to be um, open these events that were sent from that job, at those two jobs. So. The reason you have four is that a job starts and it completes, and we have two jobs that are good. You just got calls to be made here. Uh, so now if I go to the UI and I do a reset here, um, I created an example. Okay. Uh, namespace over here, you can see we have some uh, under the namespace example, and I think some data sets here as well. So we have um, these data sets counts and and some which are goals that uh, this is going to be the local host. Uh, it's just going to be Postgres. It's under the, the math um, database. And so if I click on our 
Now, this is going to be a familiar one because uh, if you've seen the airflow example, it kind of takes the same idea and uh, or, or the same type of example and just applies it to uh, the code in this case, the Java example. So see there, there's a run that completed is different from that. There's nothing here. Um, the one, the one thing that's interesting is actually I don't see. I would expect to see the SQL here, but I don't. And I think that's that's actually my fault. I'm not setting the the facet. Uh, so there's a bug in my example. But what you'll the important point is the dependency. So you'll see that this counter outputs to counts the counts table. And we do have the you know, uh, here. It's just the counts and the the type is integer, and uh, any any relevant facets are also present here as well. So here you have the fields uh, for the for the table, a sum as well, has been completed, and um, here's the sum table. Uh, so I'm not going to go into why that is not showing up. Okay, so that's how. Did I do that? The one thing, that's why lineage, so if we go back to this class, so the, the counter and the sum, or the sum jobs, we've over overwrote it. Uh, so we, we've extended the example workflows job and we kept everything the same. So we, we kind of passed around uh, the name, the name and we kept a few things internal, so the, the, the open lineage is fine, and also open has, uh, it does have a package that contains all the models. So um, this is the case here. So you'll see we down, uh, you do need two references, but I think the idea is that this can have a cleaner API, sort of a layer on top, clean things up, um, and show you why uh, you know, when I get to the method here. So that so the thing remains the same, which is why we can kind of keep things clean and then just provide the SQL for that job, or the SQL method for the job class. Here we do need the we do need to provide a run ID. So we generate the UUID and then give the job name. And then this is how you build the facets, the facets itself. And this is actually I can do this in real time, I think. No, no, no. Oh, looks like we lost Willie uh -oh. for a moment. Here he is. So can you guys hear me? Uh, kind of. Yeah, breaking out. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Where did I drop off? I'm sorry. Was it okay throughout the entire time or was it choppy? It was choppy. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, you guys, yeah, I should have mentioned something. Okay. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it, it was, oh. it was functional though, until you dropped off. Oh, okay. Yikes. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm really sorry with the internet here. Uh, I'm tethering. Okay. Now it makes sense why you, or you guys kind of turned off your video. Um, well, look, we could still continue. Let me, if uh, if I start, I, I might start being choppy. So am I, am I good now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll try to kind of go this, through this a bit quickly so you don't. We don't lose the connection here. Um, okay, so like I was saying, this open lineage class, you have all these different references to build facets, the job facets, and eventually the inputs and outputs. So we're all this is all being captured from the parameters that are being passed in, and and we're getting the table schema uh, from the database, and um, eventually we we create a new start event. We ex we then set we we eventually run the SQL and then and then complete it um, and then return back the rows. So I, I just kind of wanted to show that you, we wrapped the SQL class, we injected the code that we needed for open lineage, and then eventually return the rows and uh, execute the SQL here. So I'll, I'll stop there. Uh, this code is available on Datakin 
HQ slash demo. But I'll, I'll make sure we link that in the community channel. So I'll stop there so that way I don't get interrupted. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Hopefully, hopefully some of that was, <laughs> hopefully it wasn't too choppy at some point, but yeah. No, I, I, I could follow you pretty well. So I'm not sure about others, but I could understand for the most part, Willie. Okay, all right. Well, next meeting, I'll definitely have a better internet connection. So are there any additional uh, agenda items that you have, Willie? Oops. Yes, there was. Um, let me go back to, and this is just more of a kind of open discussion. Uh, the one thing I'm excited about, if I can, yeah, the one thing I'm excited about is the face at life cycle management that's being worked on. So um, in open lineage, there is this new life cycle state management, uh, state change data set facet. And there's work that's being done uh, to add that facet to uh, Marquez. So what that means is we can now capture if a table has been truncated, if a table has been deleted, um, there's gonna be work on capturing whether or not the data set has been renamed. Uh, so supporting supporting name name changing and also soft deletes of data sets is really important because that we've heard that in the community that when someone wants to delete a data set, they can't because um, we don't have APIs to do deletes, uh, but we're going to be supporting soft deletes of data sets. So I just wanted to point that out that that's coming and you could check out the facet uh, and also some of the work that's being done on PR 1847. So I could stop sharing that. And yeah, and maybe maybe if there was some other things that others wanted to talk about, but that, that was a key thing for me. Um, and uh, Marquez was always managing the life cycle of a data set, but it was more implicit. Um, and now, now I think it's a bit more concrete and we're capturing it through, we're gonna be capturing it through a column called the uh, life cycle state so you'll be able to see this, the, the different phases that your data set goes through. And it's gonna be supporting streams, but also tables. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's awesome metadata to have. Okay, uh, thanks Willie. And uh, are there any, um, any topics? We can we can enter the open discussion phase of our meeting, I think, at this point. Well, no, I don't have any. I, I, maybe maybe I could just comment that uh, you know Julian and I were giving a talk at uh, Data Console in Austin at the end of the month um, or end of next month, so March twenty sixth and twenty seventh. I think that's when it's happening. Uh, sorry if the dates are wrong, but I know it's the last week of the month. So if anyone's interested and you're going to be in Austin, come say hi. We'll be, we'll have office hours and yeah, so we'll, we'll be out there. Just wanted to point that out. There is also a, an open lineage talk at Subsurface next week. It's, uh, I think it's on March 3rd. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think it's going to be around Spark, if I'm not mistaken, right? or some of the focus, yeah. So yeah, for those in the Marquez community running Spark and looking to learn more about the Spark integration, definitely check out Mike's talk. It's going to be good. Um, OK, uh, well, thank you, everyone. Let me uh, take this opportunity to plug our socials. So please follow Marquez Project on Twitter if you haven't already. There's also a new LinkedIn group. Uh, we're going to be expanding a little bit on LinkedIn. So please join that when you have a chance. Uh, thank you, and we'll see you next month. OK. Cool. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye.